From the time Israel began, it has been at war. Two nations fought in the womb of Rebekah. Those two nations were Jacob and Esau. In Genesis 25-23 the Lord told Rebekah, the sons in your womb will become two nations. From the very beginning, the two nations will be rivals. One nation will be stronger than the other, and your older son will serve your younger son. And in Malachi 1-2, it says, Was not Esau Jacob's brother, says the Lord. Yet Jacob, I have loved, but Esau, I have hated. And throughout biblical times, their descendants never stopped fighting over that birthright, the land of Israel. This ancient war has continued down throughout the ages, right up until today, with Esau, represented by Palestine, who are the same ethnicity as those from Jordan. And they manifest the very same hatred of Israel, seeking the very same thing Esau's people did, to take the birthright land from Jacob. The Bible calls the land of Jordan by another name, Edom, and it's named after Esau. The Bible has a lot to say about these people from Edom and Basra who fight Jacob over the land. It's no coincidence that Jordan controls the Temple Mount. Because Edom Jordan is Israel's ancient enemy who sought to have Jacob's birthright land. And Edom Jordan gives control over the Temple Mount to the Palestinians, showing they are really all one people. The former king of Jordan, in an interview in 1981, told an Arabic newspaper. The truth is that Jordan is Palestine. And Palestine is Jordan. He was correct. They are all the same people. They are all Esau, which hates Israel. And is pushing its border further into Israel. Trying to gain more of Jacob's land by advancing this Palestinian fraud. So they are not a separate people. They are all Esau and Edom who have come to fight Jacob for the land. God portrays these two nations as spiritual mountains. One is Mount Zion, representing Jacob Israel, and the other the mountain of Esau, the enemy to Israel, which today is the Jordanian, Palestinians. The identity of Esau or Edomites has been twisted by rabbis to paint Christians as Edomites, and on the other side by Muslims to paint Jews as the Edomites. But neither of these is correct. Scripture clearly connects the Edomites to those occupying the land of Edom. To try and link a certain ethnic people with Edomites by blood would be impossible. Because most people today are a mixture of different people groups, German, Dutch, Russian, Italian etc. So rather than trying to trace bloodlines, the Bible uses places which never change and links the people in those places with the name. So Egyptians would be those in Egypt, the Libyans are those in Libya, and the Edomites are those in Edom. And it's very likely that those still in those areas do in fact descend from the original people groups. So if the Bible says judgment is coming on Edom, you know where that place is by simply checking a map. God tells us why he is angry with Edom and also Egypt. Because of their violence against Israel. In Joel 3.19, God says, Egypt will be desolate, Edom a desert waste, because of violence done to the people of Judah, in whose land they shed innocent blood. Shall I leave their innocent blood unavenged? No, I will not. Psalm 83 further explains why God is angry with Edom, and not just with Edom, but also the other Islamic nations, including the Ishmaelites, because they are plotting to wipe out Israel as a nation and erase Israel's name. This is why Muslims call it Palestine and not Israel. Psalm 83 4. Come, they say. Let us destroy them as a nation, so that Israel's name is remembered no more. With one mind they plot together, they form an alliance against you, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. The prophets make it clear there would be nations around Israel in the last days, trying to conquer it. But God says to Israel in Isaiah 41 11 16. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who tried to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. You will be a new threshing instrument with many sharp teeth. You will tear your enemies apart, making chaff of mountains. You will toss them into the air, and the wind will blow them all away. A whirlwind will scatter them. But the Muslims in that area will never admit to being the Edomites, so let's show the very word Palestine and biblical prophecy to prove that Palestinians are the ones with whom God is angry. Joel 3 4 says, Now what have you against me, Tyre and Sidon and all you regions of Palestine? Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. God says he is going to repay Tyre and Sidon 
which is Lebanon, the home of Hezbollah, and also Palestine's Hamas for their violence. We know very well, these are the two places that launch rockets against Israel. And God says he is going to pay them back. He also tells us when this payback will occur and against whom it occurs. Isaiah 34 8 says, For the Lord has a day of vengeance, a time of paying back Edom for its hostility against Zion. So who does God take his vengeance out on? Edom, which are those hostile to Zion. And who are the people hostile to Zion and despise the very word Zionism? The Palestinians and Jordanians. So the Edom being spoken of here are clearly the Muslims in that area. This day of vengeance, the day God will repay, is otherwise known as Armageddon. But Muslims sadly do not realize God is coming to defend Israel against their hostility, which will reach a critical mass in the last days. Because their false prophet Muhammad told them to fight the Jews, which is at the root of this never-ending hostility. But God has promised to save the remnant of Israel from this attempted annihilation in the last days. So let's look at a few more verses about the judgment of Edom and the other Muslim nations around Israel. And hopefully, Muslims will see they have followed a false prophet who is leading them to their destruction and a confrontation with the God of heaven. In Isaiah 34 5, God says, For my sword will be seen in the heavens. Look, it descends in judgment on Edom, on the people I have doomed to destruction. This is quite a shocking prophecy, and it becomes very clear why nobody wants to be Edom. Because God says, he has doomed these people to utter destruction. Isaiah 34 6 says, The sword of the Lord is bathed in blood, it is covered with fat, the blood of lambs and goats. Fat from the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edom. God further defines the area and people he is angry with by mentioning Basra in the same verse as Edom so that there is no mistaking that Jordanian Palestinian Muslims are the ones God is destined to destruction. Isaiah 34 9 says, Edom's streams will be turned into pitch, her dust into burning sulfur, her land will become blazing pitch. God shows this whole Jordan area will be an utter burning wasteland after his wrath. So Edom is clearly a physical place rather than just a people group. Isaiah 63 1 who is this coming from Edom, from Basra? With his garments stained crimson. Who is this, robed in splendor, striding forward in the greatness of his strength? It is I, proclaiming victory, mighty to save. It was for me the day of vengeance. The year for me to redeem, had come. I trampled the nations in my anger. In my wrath I made them drunk and poured their blood on the ground. The one robed in crimson is the Messiah Jesus. We see him also wearing crimson in the book of Revelation. He rides out of heaven to wage war with the Islamic Antichrist and his armies. By cross-referencing this Isaiah verse and Revelation, we can see this is the battle of Armageddon. All the Islamic nations gather to annihilate Israel in and around Edom Jordan, but the Messiah Jesus defeats them and redeems his people Israel. In Obadiah 118, God says, Then the house of Jacob will be a blazing fire, but the house of Esau will be stubble. Jacob will set it ablaze and consume it. Therefore no survivor will remain from the house of Esau. Here again God makes it clear that Jacob, or Israel, will burn up Esau in the last days. So obviously the Jews can't be Esau, as Muslims say. Rather the Palestinian Muslims are Esau. The ones whom Jacob is consuming with bombs. Or as God says, fire. Which is exactly what we see happening in Israel today. As Jacob defends himself by consuming Esau, the Palestinians with fire. Sadly after the Messiah's wrath. Against Esau. Edom. None of these Muslims who are hostile to Jacob will be left alive. This is why it's so important for the Muslims in Palestine to realize they are Esau. Because they need to repent fast before God's final wrath comes upon them. Obadiah 1.10-19 says. For violence against your brother Jacob. Shame shall cover you. Therefore no survivor will remain from the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken. The south shall possess the mountains of Esau, and the lowland shall possess Philistia. They shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria. Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captives of this host of the children of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites. As far as Zarephath, the captives of Jerusalem who are in Sephard, shall possess the cities of the south. 
then saviors shall come to Mount Zion, to judge the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Palestinian Muslims know they are the brothers of the Jews, and God is talking to the brothers of the Jews, telling them they are Esau, and that shame will cover them, for their violence against their brothers, Jacob, and not only that, but all the land they occupy will be taken from them, Philistia, which is Gaza, Ephraim and Samaria, which are the West Bank, Gilead, which is to the east of the West Bank and part of Jordan, and Zarephath and Sephirid, which are Lebanon. See how accurate the Bible is, for God even lists which lands these Esau Muslims would occupy today, lands which God says will be taken from them and given back to Jews. So there is no mistaking it, these Palestinians sadly are God's enemy Esau, for they occupy the very lands God listed, and they need to repent and accept Jesus as their Savior, before he appears to bring about their terrible judgment.